uterine hyperstimulation is the topic for uh, this video and essentially what um, uterine hyperstimulation is defined as is contractions that are two minutes in length or less less than or equal to two minutes so for example if you have greater than five or greater contractions um, in a period of 10 minutes uh, that would be considered uh, uterine hyperstimulation so when a woman is in labor why would somebody develop hyperstimulation well the most common cause is when you give a medication uh, to help with um, induction of labor so the most common medications are oxytocin and prostaglandins and these medications have a side effect of uterine hyperstimulation so I'll walk you through a scenario to kind of make this make sense so you have um, certain reasons why you would need to give medications um, to induce labor because not everybody would need these kinds of uh, medications so what are those reasons well if a woman is pregnant and she is in a state of preeclampsia you would need to deliver the baby so you would need to induce labor uh, if the fetus is uh, showing non-reassuring status on the fetal heart monitor then you may need to deliver the baby and you need to induce labor another reason would be placental abruption and uh, another reason is if the pregnancy is uh, greater than or equal to 42 weeks then you will need to induce labor so in these kinds of conditions um, you need to induce labor with medications so that the pregnant uh, patient can deliver the baby for obvious reasons the delivery um, needs to be done now how do you induce labor well there's two medications and the first one is oxytocin and the second one is a, a prostaglandin and there's a, there's two of the prostaglandins that are commonly used misoprostol and dinoprostone you give one of these you don't have to give both you give either that or that now Uterine hyperstimulation doesn't always happen. If you give oxytocin, for example, it may not hyperstimulate the uterus. It may just cause the necessary contractions uh, that you need to deliver. Same thing with prostaglandin. But one of the side effects of these meds, side effects, is uterine hyperstimulation, where the contractions are happening way too fast, maybe less than two minutes, you know, every one minute. Now. That is uh, obviously not the ideal thing because if a woman goes into a, a scenario of uterine hyperstimulation that can be damaging to the fetus, the fetus can become hypoxic, the fetus can become bradycardic and the heart rate can drop. So this is not something that you want. You want contractions, These you want these medications to result in labor induction which is contractions but you don't want hyperstimulation now what's important is that if a woman does go into uterine hyperstimulation you can reverse it by giving something called a tocolytic and tocolytics can be thought of as anti-contraction meds and there's several but the two most common are terbutaline and magnesium sulfate 
So you can kind of think of these as uh, medications that can reverse uterine hyperstimulation. Uh, interestingly, the, the first thing to do, of course, is to DC the medication that caused the hyperstimulation. So DC the oxytocin, for example. And then, if that doesn't work, then you would give a tocolytic. So, let's uh, look at some cl clinical vignettes to um, see what this is like in a, in a patient scenario. A 26-year-old primigravid woman at 42 weeks gestation comes to the labor and delivery ward for induction of labor. The prenatal course was significant for a positive group B strep. Culture performed at 35 weeks. Antenatal testing over the past two weeks has been unremarkable. Patient has started on lactated ringers IV solution. Stereovaginal exam shows that the cervix is long, thick, and closed. Prostaglandin gel is placed into the vagina and an electronic fetal heart rate monitor is continued. In approximately 60 minutes, the heart rate, fetal heart rate, falls to the 90s as the tocodynamometer shows the uterus to be contracting every one minute with essentially no rest in between contractions. Which of the following was the most likely cause of the uterine hyperstimulation? Well, we uh, talked about this in the, in the presentation and the two most common medications used for induction of labor are oxytocin and prostaglandins. In this case, a prostaglandin was used and one of the side effects um, one of the adverse effects, side effects, of using uh, prostaglandins is uterine hyperstimulation. So that would be choice D. Next question. 39-year-old woman, gravita 3, para 2, at term, comes to the labor and delivery ward complaining of gush of fluid. Examination shows her to be grossly ruptured and an ultrasound reveals that the fetus is in vertex presentation. Fetal heart rate is in the 120s and reactive after a few hours with no contractions, oxytocin is started. Three hours later, the tocodynamometer shows the patient to be having contractions every minute and lasting for approximately one minute with almost no rest in between contractions. The fetal heart rate changes from 120s and reactive to a bradycardia to the 80s. Sterile vaginal exam shows the cervix to be six centimeters dilated. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? So here's a scenario where a pregnant uh, patient came and uh, she um, clearly needs to uh, have uh, induction of labor, um, probably because that she's grossly ruptured and the fetus, the fetus is in vertex position. So to induce labor, oxytocin was started. And then she went into a, a scenario of uterine hyperstimulation. Every minute she's contracting. So, so the question is asking, what do you do now? What's the most appropriate next step? Well, in these kinds of questions, the, the thing that you can do most easily is always better to do than something that's more elaborate. So choice E is wrong because it's a very invasive, elaborate thing. A C-section is a big deal. And there are several choices that are much simpler to do initially because it's asking you for the next step. So that's out. C and D are actually contraindicated because you can't do um, these types of vaginal deliveries until the cervix is fully dilated. Uh, cervix needs to be fully dilated for these types of deliveries and uh, that's 10 centimeters and the cervix in this patient is only 6 centimeters so those two are out. So now you're left with A and B and both answers actually sh seem appropriate. Discontinuing oxytocin, well that seems perfectly uh, appropriate since that's the medication that caused the uterine hyperstimulation and made the fetus go into bradycardia and then starting magnesium sulfate also seems like an appropriate answer because if you remember, magnesium sulfate is a tocolytic. So which one of these is correct? Well, the next step is choice A. If you discontinue the oxytocin and 
that still doesn't stop the uterine hyperstimulation, then you would give a tocolytic, which would be choice B.